Hello, you're very welcome to Jerry's DIY. If this is your first time here and you want to learn how to make stoves, waste oil burners and lots and lots of other DIY projects, start now by subscribing and click on the bell so that you don't miss anything. So I'm in my shed now, it's, it's, winter is beginning to come in, it's like 3 degrees above freezing outside, that's 3 degrees centigrade, less than 40 Fahrenheit outside at the moment, and the shed is toasty. My waste oil burner is working away in the background, currently I'm burning, um, you know, used malter oil, but generally I, I use vegetable oil mostly if I can get it, uh, but I'm out of it at the moment. So the reason I'm experimenting with the mechanical side of things, like real oil burners and whatever, and getting them to burn waste oil, is because you know, you can get a cleaner burn for starters because you, you're providing the air. Secondly, um, they're mechanical and you know they're electrical, which means I can turn them on and off. So, and I can do that remotely, maybe. But also, um, you know, I can thermostatically control them. So, if the unit, if the flame went out, it would switch off. If the, um, you know, if the power goes, it switches off. Um, or if I just want to switch it off, I can hit a switch. You know, no big shutdown procedure. Okay, so this is your standard kind of siphon nozzle setup. Okay, you can see the O-ring on it and the engineering involved in it. A fair bit of engineering this thing as well. Okay, I'll leave a link to these in the description below. But look, this is the setup. That goes in there. Screws in. Now, you, the air goes in the back. And the oil gets sucked up here like a spray gun. Okay, so in operation I'm going to have it like this. Now it can only lift about four inches of oil and the oil has to be preheated. Okay, so air in the back and oil up here. Okay, I'm gonna show that later. Okay, this is your standard nozzle type that goes in one of these um, gun type burners. Okay, it looks a bit different than this one. I'll put them side by side so you can see a comparison. Okay, so this one kind of has a bit of a filter on the bottom of it and a tiny little hole. This one has no filter and a massive hole compared to this one. Okay, so they're different. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert a gun type Riello burner um, to run on waste oil. So there's lots of similarities between the way I'm going to make, make it work, but here's the difference. This one gets high pressure kerosene blown through this kind of sieve, if you like, or filter, and it gets blown out the nozzle and you know with a little bit of machining and whatever inside it, you get a specific spray pattern out of it. But it's just, you know, a bit like your, your squirty bottle, you know. That's how the, the kerosene comes out of that, under high pressure, at about 8 bar. That's 8 times atmosphere, which is about 14.8, so, you know, about 140, 150 PSI, something like that. That's that one. This one, the one I'm going to put in, uh, runs at about, I think, about 8 PSI, 6, 8, 10, whatever, you know. And uh, it's a different setup, okay? Now, that goes in here, and here's where the differences are. I'm going to show you now. Okay? Now, this is your standard gun type, you know, um, Riello burner, okay? It's an RDB burner. So what I'm going to do, normally what happens is this blast tube goes across here and the flame squirts out here. You can see the nozzle um, maybe in the background there. Can you see it? Yeah, so, and the nozzle sits in the center, you know, blows out. You've got air patterns then around this, you know, to change the shape of the flame and also, you know, provide enough air for combustion. Okay, so there's some engineering in the blast tube. Okay, so essentially what I'm going to do, similar setup, except instead of the, the oil being squirted out the middle, I'm going to put this one in. So this is one I've gutted, I've taken all the parts out of it. So at the moment I had the control box out of it. We don't need the oil pump, I pulled the oil pump out of it. The reason we don't need the oil pump is because we're going to use air to, you know, create the suction. So think of this like a spray gun, if you like. Okay, so I've drilled out the middle of this so that I can put quarter inch mild steel tubing in here. Okay, so it slides in here. Okay, the tread in there is a quarter inch British standard pipe tread, as far as I know. Okay, so I've treaded this piece of pipe. This isn't bar nodes, it's hollow pipe. So anyway, look. That's it now. Now I haven't put any tread tape on it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to figure out how long I need it to be, chop it, and tread it. Now I've already treaded this bit. So okay, here's our blast tube. Our blast tube is there. What's gonna happen is the nozzle is gonna be brought back. Now I'm gonna make the nozzle so I can adjust it in and out. I'm gonna tread this all the way back. Okay, it's very easy to do. Now you could probably buy these 
I just happen to have stocks in the house that I can tread it and I have a piece of um, quarter inch, you know, mild steel pipe. Okay, so it's going to get compressed air blown down this pipe. It's going to get oil feed through here. Now what I need to do is I need to take this off and put like an elbow in here. Now so that I don't have to drill the blast tube for the oil feed, I'm going to take this out. Now I can't get the part tonight, but I'll get one tomorrow. Now so very easy, when I get this elbow, I'm going to actually set it all up, pull it through here, determine how long this needs to be, chop it, and put a fitting on it and take it away for an air feed. And then this one, I'm gonna bring it out here as well and drop it down here for the oil feed. So I have a few changes to make to the, to the burner to do that. Now we're gonna need some sort of a preheater on this. And um, you know, to test it out, I'm just gonna preheat some oil in a little container. Have to suck it up through it. Um, there's a fan unit on this, so that's a fan. That's the intake, I, I can set the intake. Um, so the, the, there's a little blower on it. The blower is gonna give us the air for combustion. Uh, that blower blows air out here. I'm gonna provide air, compressed air, for the lift, also for some of the mixing as well. And uh, we'll get into that. So that's as far as I can go with this project tonight. Um, you know, we're getting there. All I've done is I've treaded this, you know, making my own nipple. You can just buy, you know, if you go to a good hardware or plumber's merchant, you can just get what you want. But I can make what I need out of this, very handy. Okay, so essentially that screws on. There's my air feed in. Okay, that's my air feed. And this is my oil feed. In operation, it's probably going to travel, you know, like this. Uh, oil, it's going to suck its oil up here, maximum of this sort of height, and it's going to blow, suck that up, air coming down here, it's going to be a, a spray pattern. And with the air mixed in from the, uh, from the blower on this thing behind me, you know, when the fan on this kicks in, um, we're going to create a pattern. Now that's it, that's going to give us a waste oil burner, mechanical waste oil burner. The advantages of this over, you know, what I normally do, is you could put it on a timer. You know, you can get it to come in, you can thermostatically control it. You can do not, an awful lot more with it than I could do. Having said that, um, <coughs> I'm actually warming this shed because my other burner is working great. Um, it's just a drip feed system. Now, I'm able to make a lot of heat with my waste oil burner, lots and lots. This is my waste oil cooker stove <laughs> propane tank conversion. Uh, it really lashes out the heat. But, uh, I'm over the far side of the shed, and although I'm getting some heat, I'm not getting enough of it. Uh, it's 3 degrees outside, less than 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, okay, so what I've done is I had one of these things in the shed. This is just a car radiator fan. Just, you know, behind a radiator in a car. This is the front fan. I, I don't even know what it's off. Uh, it's been in the shed a long time. Okay, so, what I've done is, this is a car battery charger. You know, just a standard 12 volt charger. Uh, but it's got 6 volts on it for motorbikes. Uh, or six volt batteries, that sort of thing. So anyway, I have it down at six volts, reduces the speed of the fan significantly because at 12 volts, it really spins. And it's just blowing air so fast across the, um, you know, the surface area of this that it's not getting a chance to get hot. Um, although I can feel the wind moving over there. Anyway, so what I've done is I've, I've knocked it down to six volts, reduces the, the speed of the fan significantly. And what happens then is the air blows across my waste oil cooker, which is hopping hot and uh, gets over to me. And look, I can angle it. Now, this is just temporary. This was to see, would it work? It's cost absolutely nothing. A bit of four by two or two by four. Uh, a screw down through it, and you know, 12 volt battery charger I already have. So it costs nothing, but you know, it's working really well <laughs> for, for what it is. Now, here you have it. There's my waste oil burner working fantastically. Um, it's three degrees outside. It's about 40 degrees or less Fahrenheit, three degrees centigrade and I can operate in this shed no problem because I've got this, you know. And at the moment I'm burning motor oil in the bucket, um, but mostly I burn veggie oil when I can get it. Now these things generally don't use an awful lot of power, but when I make this, it gives me the ability to increase or decrease my output um, somewhat, you know, within a certain range. You can always go with a bigger or smaller nozzle. Currently the nozzle I have is less than one gallon, US gallon an hour, so, you know, it'll produce you know, enough heat for me here in the shed. As it is, I'm, I'm running on gravity and producing plenty of heat. Uh, the idea of this is then I can thermostatically control it, uh, I can time clock it if I want, you know, have it set to come on at a certain time, all that sort of stuff. So look, I'm making lots of heat in the shed. I'm not making this so I can make more heat, I'm just making it so I can control it better. So that's it, I'm gonna convert a standard real burner. 
These are very cheap, secondhand. You know, um, I have a few of them lying around from you know jobs I do. Um, but essentially, you know, you don't. The only bit you need working is the, the control box and the fan. The rest of it, uh, not so much. Okay, so this is an old type of yellow burner. Uh, this one, you know, I took off a job somewhere, uh, became unreliable or whatever. But I've got it. I've taken out the pump, and um, the control box is going to go back into it, and we'd end up. Hopefully, with a functioning waste oil burner gun type, you know, that we can control thermostatically and on a time clock. So that's the plan. Okay, some people asking about the, uh, the drip feed oil system. So I'm just going to go quickly through that. Now, I've done it in other videos, but um, here we go. This is my setup as, as it is now, coming up to Christmas 2017. Okay, so I've got oil. You can see waste oil that's car used motor oil in the bucket. Um, I've used a half inch tank connector here. Just um, drill the hole, put the tank connector in, and, and that's it. Comes down into a half inch ball valve, like lever valve. Um, I have it off at the moment, so that's off now, at right angles to the pipe. Comes down this half inch pipe, and into an elbow. From the elbow then, down into a, a gate valve. Now I did a bit of a job on the gate valve. Okay, I'll tell you about that in a second. So down into the gate valve, down into a T-piece. This is a mild steel T-piece. Okay, and I literally just cut the thing off it so that I could see it, and I drilled a hole in the back of it so I could see straight through. Um, in operation, let me just put the oil in now for a second. Okay, so can you see the oil? There's the oil in. There's the oil off. Okay, it's just a couple of drips. All right, there's my hand behind it. Okay, the reason for the hole is purely so you can see it. You know, you can see the, the flow of oil. Okay, that goes down into another half inch pipe, you know, through a couple of fittings. Half inch pipe, and that carries all the way inside this other pipe, all the way down, and into the stove, okay? You can see the flame there. Okay, so it's just pipe in a pipe. I put the pipe in, and I bent the other pipe. Now, this is a one inch elbow, okay? I drilled a hole in the elbow, big enough for the half inch pipe to go through and then that pipe travels down the centre of this one. The reason for that is, I can introduce air down this pipe and it doesn't affect the half inch copper pipe, it's separate. So if I blow air in here, or if I want to put kerosene down this pipe, it travels down the, the mild steel pipe and into the burn chamber. Okay, now there's savage heat off this, so I, I can't get too close to it. So there you go. That's what it looks like now, okay. Now, I don't remember who gave me the advice before, but uh, one of the guys, it was a great bit of advice. When you look inside one of these gate valves, when you take the top off it, when you take this piece off it, inside there's a round piece, like a gate, you know, that it, put, it withdraws, pulls up and down. Um, and what the guys did was they cut a notch out of the back of it, and, um, and that helps with the flow through the valve. Now, not all the way through, just a piece out of it, if you like, uh, to structure or to guide the oil through it but it works really well. So there you go, there's a quick and easy um, look at the oil feed system into my waste oil burner. Now, I have it shut off, and you can see, um, you can see that the flame is beginning to die in it. Okay, now this thing is red hot, it's been really great. My shed is nice and warm now, toasty, and it's very, very cold outside. Okay, so that's it. Hope this helps. So there you go, that's your update. Um, if you like the video, please thumbs up, subscribe down here somewhere. See you in the next video. Good luck, bye.